What's going on, Minties? This is Omar from Near Mint Condition. And today, I am going to show you my haul for the month of February of 2019. So please stay tuned. Okay, first, let's look at this stack of manga. I've already done an overview of Urusei Yatsura. Once again, Rumiko Takahashi's earliest work that I can remember or know of. Hijinx, space pirates coming to Earth to take over, and falling in love with an idiot named Ataru. So, yes, this is awesome. I love that book. I have never read these, but I did enjoy the anime, and I got these at Book and Music Exchange when Amanda and I did one of our haul video or graphic novel hunt videos. I had some credit at the store and decided to go ahead and get the first four volumes, and if I really liked it, I was going to go and buy the rest. Um, so this is Black Lagoon, and I've watched, yeah, the first two OAVs. No, I watched the first two series, and then there was an OAV. But I am digging this artwork. It's freaking fantastic. And I like the fact that it's oversized. It's a little taller than your standard manga. Uh, from a Facebook group, I think it was the Anime and Manga Exchange group, I picked up Solonin by Inio Ansano, who I really enjoyed his Goodnight Poon Poon, and I need to get the rest of that. This is one of those books that kind of slipped under the radar for me. I was doing reviews for Viz back then, and for some reason... I had stopped doing them for a magazine and it was a transition period where I was just like, I'm done doing reviews and I was looking forward to this book and I never ended up picking it up. So I'm glad that I picked it up because it looks awesome. I love, love his artwork. It's just gorgeous. Um, and it has, it has a lot of high praises, much like all of his work does. And just look at that. That is gorgeous. All right. So here's one that I'm kind of... Happy and upset that I got into was the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure hardcovers. I've got the first uh, two parts. Well, I'm missing part or part two, number four. I didn't realize that they were on the eighth part in Japan, and apparently that's the last one. It's been going on since the uh, early 90s, late 80s. No idea what this is about. My wife really loves the anime, and I had watched some of the anime from the OAVs in the mid-90s, and then, of course, played the fighting game on the Sega Dreamcast, but had no idea that what this book was even about, other than the wacky characters that show up and how badass they are. I didn't know it drew a lot of inspiration from American comics and, of course, just looking at the art alone, Fist of the North Star, how violent it is. So, up my alley, hell yes. Downside, oh my god, I didn't realize there were so many volumes of this. So, here I go. That's volume one. Apparently, the art style, much like Berserk, changes throughout the years. Um, here's the rest of the volumes, um, part two. And let's just look at the little bit of the artwork there from part two. Some of these characters look familiar from the fighting game, like I said, that I played many years ago on the Sega Dreamcast. Rest in peace. Just ridiculous, over-the-top, muscular dudes. Hell yes! Look at that, that's awesome. Uh, speaking of manga and Berserk, of course, I did an overview of Berserk. Book sold out really quick. I think it's, like, uh, sold out in 20 minutes at in-stock trade. So, I'm happy about that because it's Berserk. But don't worry, it's not out of print. It's just out of stock. They will be getting more. These next two books I got when I was graphic novel hunting with Amanda. The first one is Boxers and Saints. Um, half price books. No idea what it's about. But I've heard a lot of high praise about this. A lot of my viewers have asked me if I have read it. And now I can say, not yet, but I did buy it. So that's a start. And Habibi. Now I know the creative, well, the creator, Craig Thompson, he's the guy that did Blankets. And I love Blankets. But this book gets a lot of high praise, too, from a lot of my viewers and a lot of people on the internet. It's one of those one-shot graphic novels, so looks really interested in what the heck. Uh, somebody left their card to the Wild and Wooly Video Rental Place. I don't even know if that place is still around in Louisville. And I guess maybe a bookmark. Maybe they got to this point and they were like, nope, no Habibi for me. Next up is Mr. Miracle. Of course, I think most people have picked this up. This is Tom King's book. Uh, I've read the first four issues. I am hooked. I'm already enjoying it more than I did his vision. And I really, really love vision. Now, now that might be because of his artwork. Now, in May, I think the comic book stores are getting a hardcover. So I'm probably going to upgrade to that hardcover. But yeah, just look at that artwork alone. Beautiful. And one of the books that I 
did not get for some reason when it came out. Maybe because I was burned out on Wolverine. The Hunt for Wolverine. Um, I'm reviewing this with the Omni Bros. Let's look at this really quick. Uh, some of the series, about half of the series I really enjoyed. And then the other half were kind of just trash. <laughs> I don't know how else to call it. So 50-50. I think it's worth it alone for the Adamantium Agenda. I think that's Tom Taylor that wrote that. And the Mariko series, the Claws of a Killer. That was really good. I didn't really like the Murder and Madripoor story. I think that's written by Jim Zub. Um, yeah, no, did not dig that. Now, that could be also because of the artwork. I was not a fan of this art. But anyway, then we got Batman Dark Knight Detective. Uh, by the way, I do have some in-stock trades and DCBS comics coming in to me. Um, it's just that they're somewhere in transit. I don't know what's going on with my post office. So. I'm kind of glad that they're going to wait until March, though, because this haul was pretty big, and, and there's a reason why. So this is after Crisis on Infinite Earths. I am going to be doing a comprehensive reading order of Batman sometime in the near future, so... Uh, you will find out where this fits in. Uh, so I've done an overview of Wonder Woman and Captain Marvel. If you want to check that on the, on the channel, please do so. And I've also done this right here, the Hulk Dogs of War hardcover. Um, my comprehensive reading order of Incredible Hulk Part 2 is coming out this Friday. I am actually filming that starting today and probably putting it together. And it'll be out Friday. And don't forget to check out our channel tomorrow on Thursday when we come back from our break for our panel show and then i got these little figures based on the gentle giant statues by scotty young uh there are a total of four of them i'll open one up here at the end of the segment here to check out what it looks like but they're 12.99 each i think Gwenpool was the hardest one to find let's move on to kyle stack kyle is a viewer of mine who was wonderful enough to send me a care package I knew that he had found me top 10, absolute top 10, and he was sending it my way. I had no idea these other books with some amazing notes were coming to me. So thank you very much, Kyle. We had a really good conversation yesterday. Uh, this is one of my favorite books that came out. This is the Dark Empire Trilogy. Uh, I lost these in trade paperback when I moved back in 2003, 2004. I think it got rained on or something. Uh, but this takes place after the Thawne Trilogy. Oh my gosh, yes, these these were some of my favorite Dark Horse books. They let it go out of print. I think there was an oversized hardcover released of this, but this is just such a badass book. Luke Skywalker goes bad and it's up to, up to Han and Leia's kids to go get him back. Oh, Jesus, I love this. Thank you so much for this alone. But then um, he also found the G.I. Joe versus Transformers Omnibus. This is by uh, DDP. This is before IDW. So... This is awesome. I have never seen this. I know it went out of print after a couple of years, and it was during the time when I wasn't picking up the Transformer comics, but I right, thank you so much for finding this for me, brother. It's not the only Transformers-related item he got me. He got me this Red Label Limited Edition um, All Hail Megatron from IDW Hardcover. It hasn't been opened, and like, I'm scared to open it because I know how much these things are worth. I don't own any of the Limited Edition ones, and this is just such a wonderful gift. Ah, uh, who am I kidding? I open up everything. I will open this up. No reason not to. And here is the absolute that I knew he was sending me. Everything else, like I said, was a big surprise, including the last items I'm going to talk about here in a second. This is Absolute Top 10 by Alan Moore. It's one of my wells that just got away from me. Um, let's look at what it looks like on the inside. Oh, man, it's got beautiful artwork by Gene Ha huh? on the inside as well. Let's look inside and show you why I wanted this so bad. Uh, Gene Ha is one of those artists that just draw so much beautiful detail in every one of his panels. I absolutely love his artwork. I fell in love with his artwork when he was doing, um, what was it, the Cyclops and Phoenix, the, the Ask Any Sun series, or the Adventures of Cyclops and Phoenix, that's what it was. And Oh, no, and he also did the sequel. He created a lot of the characters for that future where Cable is from when he was a kid. And I love his character designs, and I wanted to know what else he had done. And this is just one of those books. I mean, it's written by Alan Moore. How did DC let this go out of print to begin with? So, also one of those books that I've never read. So that's why it's very important to me. So I cannot wait to dive into this. This looks amazing. So once again, thank you, Kyle. 
But the biggest surprise out of this whole package were these amazing custom bound Nightfall books. And yeah, I already own Nightfall in hardcover. But I'm one of those people that always griped. He said one of the earliest videos he saw of mine was the one where I was giving a tour of Kirk's books. And I griped about how much I hated the fact that they left out the Sword of Asriel in these. I Because it's not complete without Sword of Asriel. And so he had these books custom bound to include Sword of Asriel in these. I, I, have, I have no words. <laughs> this was so amazing. I was not expecting anything like this. So thank you so much, man. Also picked up Star Wars by Jason Aaron. Let's look at that really quick. I didn't do an overview of this because I kind of got into it late. Kind of like my He-Man omnibus. I was going to do an overview. And the uh, damn thing, I'm still waiting on it. So I know there's other channels that have done overviews on it. So if you want to check out what that book looks like, please... Go and do so. I think the hardcover comic did one because I checked it out because I'm still waiting on mine. Uh, I mean, I could also do an overview of it, but I think, you know, by now most people have bought it. So, oh, Simon Bianchi, Salvador La Roca, John Cassidy, uh, Stuart Eminen, Lionel Yu, just all these amazing artists that have picked up on this run. And then, of course, the Vader Down storyline, the crossover. Not a big fan of Salvador La Roca's artwork in this, though. Let me just show you some of the stuff that I noticed him. He just seems to be using too much Photoshop for me. Yeah, like this kind of stuff. I don't know, man. I'm not digging that at all. Like, he wasn't... He didn't use Photoshop like this at all when he started out. This is just crazy. Uh, this is something else right here. Um, collects a huge chunk. Actually, collects all of Jason Aaron's run. It collects issues 1 through 37 of Star Wars, which he wrote, annuals 1, 2, and 3. Uh, the Vader Down, issue 1, and then the crossover with uh, Darth Vader, which I think is 12 and 13. Uh, the Dr. Aphra crossover, which is 7 and 8. And I also picked up Dr. Aphra, and you should too. It's at InStockTrades.com for 50% off this week, along with the Greg Rucka Wonder Woman Volume 1 because of Old Reader, New Reader. So you should definitely check that out. Um, yeah, Salvador La Roca. Man, what happened, dude? You used to be such an amazing artist. Eh, I was always one of those guys that appreciated Carlos Pacheco's artwork more than I did La Roca. But still, this this is more like Greg Land almost. Not the La Roca I remember. Here is the penultimate book that I picked up, Kaiju Max. It is freaking humongous. I wanted to show it next to an omnibus to show you how big it is. There's the Star Wars Omnibus and Kaiju Max. I mean, it's the size of the Gunslinger edition of Six Gun, which I also picked up. Let's look at this really quick. Show you some of the artwork in here and why I picked it up. Because I was a big fan of giant monsters growing up. And it's like a prison for giant monsters. And they're all kind of loosely based on Godzilla or Ultraman. Ultra 7 was my dude growing up. Uh, King Kong and it's really cool the way that this is written and then these guys kind of keep them in check uh, Some of them are based on like some older monster movies like Dracula and, and characters like that Now it may not seem like a lot of dialogue to read But each page I swear this is really cool what he does Has these little footnotes at the bottom that tells you Where these characters came from or where they're loosely based from and I think that's really cool so I got kind of sucked into, like, I mean, there's characters like Mechagodzilla. Um, but anyway, I got sucked into reading each one of these. Um, I've read the first two books. Um, don't want to flip too much through here, but that's what the artwork looks like. It's all done by Xander Cannon. These were originally printed in trade paperback form, and this collects issues 1 through 12. So it's like the first year. Uh, and then we have the Six Gun Volume 5. There's going to be six of these, collecting issues 41 through 47, the Hell or High Water miniseries, and then I think two more miniseries, if I'm not mistaken. So there is going to be six of these Gunslinger editions, or whatever they decided to call these, oversized hardcovers of gun the Six Gun. So I've only read the first two volumes of this, and I'm really digging it. Western, Zombies... And it's Colin Bunn. And the guy is kind of hit or miss for me. But this is definitely a hit. This is so solid. I really enjoy this. Um, and I also picked up his Harrow County from Dark Horse. And that was really, really good too. So, yes, this gets a 
complete hell yes for me. I, I really enjoyed this book. So I can't wait to wrap it up. I'll probably wait until volume six is out before I finish it. And as promised, I was gonna open one of these up to see what they look like. Let's see. Like little gentle giant statues are cute and awesome, but they're, you know, 60 bucks. You can catch them on sale sometimes for like $30. These are PVC, so they're plastic. But the amount of detail on at least this and its base, because I know the the regular statues have a normal like black or brown base and each one looks identical. But these have their own little unique bases like Deadpool and Gwenpool, or not Gwenpool, Spider-Gwen. She comes on like a chimney. Yeah, this is really cool. So I'm glad I picked these up. I hope they keep making more. This is series one. So they just came out a couple weeks ago. And that was my haul for February of 2019. I'd love to know what you guys picked up this month. Better late than never, huh? Sorry about that. I was waiting on some packages. And like I said, I have no idea where two of my packages are, including my damn He-Man omnibus I've been looking forward to. But anyway, this was Omar. Thank you very much for watching. I'd love to know what you guys got. So please don't forget to leave those comments down below. Don't forget to check out the show back on Thursdays. Hell yeah, we're back. Our panel show. Our old reader, new reader next week, live on Tuesday at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And that's 8 p.m., by the way. We were talking about the Dark Phoenix Saga. Very excited to talk to the two ladies about that. And don't forget to check out the channel back on Friday where I'm going to do the comprehensive reading order of The Incredible Hulk Part 2. It is coming, I promise. Again, this was Omar. Thank you very much for watching. And don't forget, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint. <laughs>